Welcome to my channel. I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing Kroger's stock and analyzing its financial ratios. Comment if you have questions. I respond to every comment. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. Kroger started in 1883, a long time ago. It's the largest supermarket in the U.S. in terms of revenue. It's the second largest retailer behind Walmart and it's the fifth largest retailer in the world. It operates 2,750 supermarkets, but I have never seen one because I live in California and I used to live in New York. And the stores are located in the Midwest and Southern United States. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $27.3 billion. And let's see what they're trading at. 35.13, so that's one share of stock. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Now I'm going to pull their actual free cash flows. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Capital expenditures are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Let's pull the net income. That's the profit and loss on the income statement. And we also need the revenue, which are the sales for each year, also on the income statement. We also want to look at the numbers. You can see their free cash flow is increasing quite a bit from year to year. So that's a good sign. They're operating with healthy, positive free cash flow. Net income also looks pretty good. And their revenue is growing each year. $123 billion. That's a really big company. Let's look at a capital structure so we can figure out the discount rate to apply to the future cash flows. They pay 603 million of interest on their debt. Let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. We'll go to the liability section. Current debt of 1.9 billion, that's debt due within 12 months. Long term debt of 11 billion, that's debt due after 12 months. They pay 4.5% interest on their debt. Interest payments are tax deductible, so let's get their effective tax rate. Income before tax of $2 billion. Income tax of $469 million. So their effective tax rate is 24%. The cost of debt is 3.5%. Let's pull the beta. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. They have a really low beta, 0.31, so the stock is not volatile at all. That means their cost of equity is going to be really low. Let's go back to the balance sheet, get their current assets. We need the current assets to calculate the current ratio later. 11 billion of current assets. That's 400 million of cash, 1.7 billion of receivables. That's how much money other companies owe this company and seven billion of inventory. Let's get the current liabilities. That's 14.2 billion. And that's current debt of 1.9 billion, accounts payable of 6.3 billion. That's how much Kroger owes other companies. 1.1 billion of accrued liabilities. These are expenses the company has incurred but it hasn't paid yet like payroll and payroll taxes are a common type of accrued liability and 4.2 billion of other. Stockholders equity, that's a value of the company according to the balance sheet, that's 8.7 billion. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities. That's 1.9 billion of common stock, 21 billion of retained earnings. Retained earnings is all your prior net incomes minus all the prior dividends you paid out negative 640 million of accumulated other comprehensive income. Let's go back to the income statement and pull their EBIT earnings before interest and taxes. That's 2.3 billion. That's how much money the company makes on its operational business but before paying interest on its debt and before paying taxes. Let's look at a capital structure. 61% debt, so they're a bit leveraged. Cost of debt is 3.5%. 39% equity, cost of equity is 4.7%, and the WAC is 4%. That's a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. 
We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, that's all cash flows past year four, that's 47 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $44 billion. We divide that by 800 million shares. We get a stock price of $57. They're trading at $35, so they're trading at a 39% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're saying $68, so they're saying it's even more undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading. As I expected, coronavirus has helped this stock because a lot of people are going to grocery stores and buying everything off the shelves. Let's look at the financial ratios. PE of 16.5, which is decent. The median in the entire market is 15.1. An amazing price of sales, 0.2. The median in the market is 1.8. The average is 5.4. A really good price to book at 3.2, the median is 2.5, the average is 5.7. Price to earnings, the stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 16.5, so investors are paying $16.50 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales, the stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 0.2. So investors are paying 20 cents for $1 of revenue. It's really common for supermarket chains to have low price sales ratios because their revenue is really high, but their margins are really low. So they have low earnings, but they have high sales. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. Remember, equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet. And their ratio is 3.2. I'd like to see below 3.5. So investors are paying $3.20 for $1 book value. They have a weak current ratio. The median is 1.3. The average is 1.8. They have a good interest coverage ratio. The median is 4.1. The average is 13.5. And they have a pretty good ROE at 19%, the median is 13%, the average is 8%. Current assets over current liabilities, so they cannot cover their current debts and payables, which means they either need to take on more debt or they need to bring in more revenue in the near future. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 19%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above two, they're at 3.7. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Alimentation, Couchtard, Lobla, and Metro. And if Kroger has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So they have the best PE of all the companies and the best price to sales ratio of all the companies. These are good ratios to be the best in. They're better than average in price to book. They are worse than average in current ratio, a little worse than average in ROE, and they are worse in debt at 61%. The average is 49%. They have a second highest market cap at 27 billion. Alimentation has 36 billion when it converted to US dollars. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I always answer comments. And if you want to see me value more companies, then subscribe. Thanks for watching.